One of the things I love about Linux is that there are just a ton of applications out there. Pretty much any type of application you can imagine, it exists. And even if you can't imagine it, it probably still exists. And I love searching for brand new applications that I've never heard of before because it just allows me to learn something new or find new exciting shiny things. And because I like doing that so much, it led me to the creation of a new series of videos that I call Top Apps of the Month. Now that we're in October, it's time for another one of these videos. So I have five really cool applications for you this month. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first app on this list for this month is called Dialect. And basically what Dialect is, is an application that allows you to translate words and phrases from one language to another. And it's really cool. Now, I will say that this does require the internet. So this connects to the internet and it gets mo all of its data from the internet. So just keep that in mind that anything you type in is being sent somewhere. I don't have a big problem with that because the fact that I didn't have to download all these languages to my computer in order for this to work is probably a good thing. But it works really, really well. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So I'm here in English and Spanish now. If I just type in hello and then hit translate here, we get the answer of hola, right? I mean, really simple. And obviously you can get as complex as you want. So let's just say I wanted to say, where is the best pizza restaurant? And then translate this. It's going to give us the answer. So the best thing about dialect is that there are a ton of languages to select. You can select Spanish, German, French, all those. These seems to be seem to be the ones that are like the the main ones that it's telling you that it supports, but there are a ton of other languages here as well. And also, and now I won't be able to actually have you listen to this because I don't have the audio connected to the Audacity recording, but down here at the bottom, there's this little speaker. And if you press that, ¿Dónde está la mejor pizzería? It'll actually say the phrase in whatever language you're, you've selected. So it just said, ¿Dónde está la mejor pizzería? My Spanish accent is just amazing, and you should all bow down to my Spanish accent. Uh, it's horrible. I can't, I can't roll R's. I can't say the Z's, the, the, the J's, the, and the, you know, I, I can't speak Spanish, where the damn, uh, that, but that's, that's beside the point. Uh, if you're going to be learning a different language or you just need to know a phrase, the fact that it will tell you how it's, you know, supposed to be pronounced is kind of cool. Now I could probably sit here and actually learn how to pronounce this thing, but I ain't got that kind of time because I'm too much of an idiot to learn how to, you know, speak another language. Um, although I did take six semesters of Spanish in college, you would think that I would actually, you know, remember those things, but I don't remember any of it. Um, apparently I slept through those classes. I remember the verb dormir. I think that's to sleep, but I could be wrong. Anyways, actually, you wanna, I'm going to find out. I'm very curious now. To sleep. Uh, let's see here. Haha, <laughs> I was right. I do remember something from, from college. That's about the only thing I did through college was dormir. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that's dialect. It's really cool. And uh, you can download that from Flatpak. It's also in the AUR, but I will say that the AUR, for whatever reason, doesn't download it, download all the dependencies. So you'll get an error, or at least I did. So I would recommend the Flatpak. All right. So that is dialect. The second app on the list for this month is called Yoga Image Optimizer. And basically what this does is it takes an image and transforms it or output outputs it to a different format. And that's basically all this does. Now it does a couple it does do a couple other things, I suppose. It will allow you to set maximum size, it'll allow you to change the output file, and in certain cases it'll allow you to change the image quality. I believe that's only for JPEG, but I might be wrong on there. So basically this is a GUI front end for something like Image Magic. It's not actually associated with Image Magic, but it does at least some of the work that Image Magic would do, the convert option of Image Magic at least. And it's cool. If all you need to do is go through and do a batch of images and change them from say JPEGs to pings or uh, whatever, or d say you had a whole bunch of those really weird images that are uh, WebPs, 
these things here if you want these lossless ones if a lot of applications don't actually read these things so you actually have to translate have to convert them to something different you could go through and do a whole bunch of images all at once in this application and it would you know it would just do them now i will say that it is slow it is slow so if you if i hit, went up here and hit optimize and let it do its thing it would take quite a long time i will say that you can go through in the settings and change the number of threads that it will use to do the con the conversion uh, i not sure that it actually makes any difference i haven't gone through and done a whole bunch of images so i don't know if it will actually improve it or not but it is really good now i will say that this is similar to something that we covered a few months ago in one of these videos called conversing this is not as full featured as conversing because conversing allowed you to go through and change metadata and all that kind of stuff this does not do that all this does is change image and size that's all it will do or format and size i should say uh, that's all it does so that's yoga image optimizer the third application on this list for this month is not actually an application it's a website so i'm kind of cheating but they say if you're not cheating you ain't trying so we'll just ignore the fact that this is not actually something that you can install the quote unquote application is called Snapdrop. Now I was looking for something like this because recently I switched to iOS for my main uh, mobile device. And for those of you who know, you can't actually very easily connect your iPhone to your Linux machine without doing some hocus pocus. And it's not a very easy thing to do. So what I needed to do was find a way to transfer files from my Linux machine to my iPhone. And that's where Snapdrop comes in because I was looking for something that was would kind of emulate AirDrop, which is Apple's proprietary device to device, you know, transfer protocol. And that's where I came up with Snapdrop. Basically, what Snapdrop does is allow you to do transfer files from one device to another as long as they're on the same network. And it's really as simple as that. Now, it doesn't have to be, you know, iOS to you know, a Linux machine, it can be literally any device to any device as long as they both have a web browser and they're on the same network. So I could go through and just drag a file from my computer and it would show up on my iPhone as long as I had the website up on both devices. Uh, or I could do it vice versa. It doesn't matter. And it would, like I said, it would work on any device that has a web browser. So that is Snapdrop. Now, if you're into hosting things yourself, Snapdrop does have a Docker image that you can host yourself. Now, the documentation for learning how to do so is utter garbage, so you're pretty much on your own if you decide to do that. Uh, you'd probably have to have quite a bit of expertise in order to actually know how to do it. Uh, I do not have that expertise, so I just use the website. That's snapdrop.net, by the way. That's the, the link to the website that you'll need to actually open up on both of your devices. So that's Snapdrop. Now, the fourth app on this list for this month is called Pensela, P-E-N-S-E-L-A. And I, I spelled it because I always keep wanting to call it Panacela or some other variation on something else, which I don't even know what it is. It's Pensela, P-E-N-S-E-L-A. And I'm going to show you this, but just know that this does not work for me. And I'll explain the reason why here in a minute. And, but overall, it's actually a really cool app. So what it is... If I open this up here, again, remembering how to spell it, basically what Pensela is, I'm going to butcher the name every time, is an annotation application. So basically what this does is allows you to draw on the screen. So I can pick a color here. I can pick a line so I can you know, draw a line. And I can go through and do, let's see, a check mark. So here's some check marks. I can do a star. There's some stars. I could do, I don't know, an arrow. It's, you know, it takes some getting used to. And you can text. And basically, that's what Pensela does. Now, and then you could go through and hit this screenshot button right up here. And it would take a screenshot of what you annotated on your screen. Now, it does not work very well in a tiling window manager. That's one thing. It does work, 
but it's not great because it's trying to mess around with the monitors. Right now it's kind of covering over both monitors. It's kind of a mess in a tiling window manager. It worked fine in terms of the annotation and stuff and the windowing and stuff in a, in a regular desktop environment. I used it in Plasma for a little while. It was fine. Uh, the one thing I will say is that if you do not use the conventional places for your pictures folder, your fi pictures directory, so slash home, slash username, slash pictures, uh, this will not work. So if I actually hit this, I'm going to get an error. So this error here basically is just telling me that home slash Dr. M dub slash pictures does not exist. And that's because I don't use that location for my pictures directory. I have it in some place else. Now I do have set the XDG directory structure uh, for my actual directory so that the computer really does know where my pictures folder is. Uh, but whatever reason, Pansela does not follow those uh, those rules. Uh, so this doesn't actually work for me, which is you know kind of disappointing because it's kind of cool because you can go through and draw draw on your screen it's really neat uh i believe that this would work better on a touch screen device because i think that's what it was meant for but if you can you can get this to work for it when you have the proper directory structure uh, it actually is really cool that's pensela as with all the rest of these the links will be in the video description where you can download these or use them uh, such as they are now the last application on the list for this month is called Nimble Note, and pretty much every month I include a note-taking application because I'm always on the hunt for really cool ways of taking notes. Uh, I'm pretty much entrenched now into VimWiki, but I do enjoy trying out new note applications, and when I saw this one come up on uh, It's Foss, I believe is where I found this application, uh, it, it caught my attention because it claims to be a keyboard driven note taking application and pretty much anything that's keyboard driven is something that's going to catch my attention because I enjoy using applications that primarily use the keyboard to navigate so I downloaded it and I was mostly disappointed so I've included it on the list because it is kind of cool but it has some provisos let me just say and I'll cover those at the end but first let's talk about the good stuff so first you get to notes or create new notes by typing in a name for the note so I've already created one here called new note and it just takes me to a note that I created earlier and this follows the traditional markdown uh, syntax kind of I say kind of because it's not perfect so it's not it doesn't have multiple levels of like headings this is a heading if I can type and so if I try to do two this is a heading it shows up the same now sometimes markdown requires you to do the hashes at the end as well but that doesn't actually change anything so if you, it also seems to do odd things with the spaces so you can notice the color change for the text if you don't put a space there uh, and again, it doesn't matter how many hashes you put you know, before that, it stays basically the same size, same text color, everything. So it doesn't follow Markdown completely, but it does most of the Markdown stuff. Now, it does lists. So, oops, I actually exited this. It does lists. So if I do, did Alt Enter, it would actually do this check mark checkbox thing here. That's really cool. It does the tr traditional regular list, so like dashes or asterisks will actually do a list. It'll also do, it'll also go through and colorize when you do a numbered list as well. The downside is that if you, if I started out a new numbered list here, and then a lot of markdown applications will actually go through, and once you hit enter, it'll put two here automatically, and then three, four, five, six. Uh, Nimble Note does not do that you have to type everything yourself, which is uh, quite disappointing. It also apparently has link capabilities similar to what something like ZimWiki would do, but or even VimWiki, I guess, but I couldn't get it to work. So if you do Alt Enter on this, it's supposed to take me to a, a new page or something. It doesn't. So that kind of leads me to the per first proviso. The documentation for this application is utterly crap. It's really really bad this is literally all there is that's literally all there is i mean there's no other documentation 
out there at all. And basically all it does is tell you how to open up a new note and how to do the markdown actions, which is basically check boxes. That's literally, again, all the documentation there is, which is disappointing because for a keyboard centric note taking application, having it so that you can actually, you know, see all the keyboard shortcuts, it's kind of a necessary thing. So that's a, that's disappointing. Now I, I usually on these application ones, I try to keep the positive positively going, but uh, this app has been on my list since last month. I really wanted to feature it uh, because it's supposed to be really good. Uh, and it is perfectly workable. Uh, and if you're into the keyboard centric workflow, it does do really good, but you're going to have to be mostly on your own in terms of figuring things out because the documentation is trash. Uh, I will also say if it matters to you, this is not an open source application. It is proprietary according to its uh, Snap Store page. And that's the third proviso is that this thing here is only available through Snaps. You cannot download this thing anywhere else. So, uh, that might be a turnoff for a lot of people. I know it would be for me. Uh, I was very shocked. I, I, I shocked, I say, to find out that this is not in the AUR. Uh, like I don't understand. Like I, I, I was. I, you should have seen my face when I tried to download this from the AUR and it came back package not found. Like I think this is the first time in f like three years of using the AUR that I've not that I found a package that's just not there. It's not there, and it's, it was very shocking. So yes, I had to download it from Snaps. So those are the three provisos. I, uh, like normally, I want to be very positive about applications, and overall, I think this is uh, an application that has a lot of potential. But you should know going in those three provisos, uh, and and I say that just because I really like the word proviso. So those are the top five apps of the month for this month. And uh, there's some really good stuff there. I really, really like dialect. Uh, I like messing around with languages, even though I can't speak any of them. <laughs> you know, so I can see how that can be really, really useful, especially seeing as how it's a GTK app. So if you're on a Linux mobile device, so if you're on something like Ubuntu Touch and you download that, which you can do, uh, because it is like responsive or whatever, you could actually have this on the go with you. And, you know, when you need to ask someone who only speaks Spanish where the toilet is, you can do so. So that's really cool. That's my favorite one of the month. So in the comments below, let me know what your favorite one of the month is. And if you have any suggestions for applications for future iterations of this series, leave those in the comments below. But I will note, do not leave a link in those comments because YouTube will just delete them and I will never see them. So uh, if your comment gets deleted because you put a link in there, uh, don't blame me. I, I didn't do it. So that is it for us this month. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast where you can also submit application suggestions if you want. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knife Tools, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.